Hi, my name's Rob Jones, and I'm going to show you the main operational features of the Sapphire Pro 40, Focusrite's new multi-channel firewire audio interface. With the Pro 40, you can connect microphone, line level, or instrument sources, as well as digital signals, in order to record them to your DAW. The numerous hardware outputs, plus the intuitive Sapphire Pro 40 control software, allow a whole host of zero latency monitoring options for any recording or playback situation. The first thing to do when setting up is to run the installer found on the resources disk. Once you've done that, you can connect the Sapphire Pro 40 to your computer using the supplied firewire cable and either of the firewire ports. There are two so that other firewire devices can be chained to your computer, should it only have one port. One thing to be aware of is that most computers only have one firewire bus, even if they have more than one firewire port. And multi-channel firewire interfaces take up a lot of the maximum bandwidth for that bus. So it's advisable to not have any other firewire devices that also use a lot of bandwidth connected at the same time. For example, DSP boxes like Focusrite's Liquid Mix. A firewire backup disk or a digital camera should be fine. If absolutely necessary though, you can buy firewire cards which increase the number of firewire buses on your system. The Pro 40 requires mains power, so you need to attach the IEC lead to the mains inlet on the rear panel. While you're there, you can connect your amp or active speakers to the main monitor outputs, outputs 1 and 2, using balanced jack connectors. The level of these outputs is controlled by the monitor knob on the front panel complete with non-latching dim and mute switches. Alternatively, you can use the software monitor controls, but the level dial will only work if the hardware control switch here has been deactivated. Otherwise, the level is locked to that on the hardware. If wanting to fix Sapphire Pro 40 into a rack, then the stylish ear covers can be removed and reattached by squeezing gently on either side, as follows. On the front panel are combi inputs for channels 1 and 2. This means it's possible to quickly connect a microphone, a line level, or instrument like a guitar without having to reach around the back. For example, if connecting a microphone, then insert the XLR into input 1. And if using a condenser mic that requires phantom power, activate the phantom power switch for inputs 1 to 4. Now, the level can be set using the gain dial whilst keeping a close eye on the LED meter to ensure the signal does not clip. Now, if wanting to record a guitar, then simply connect the guitar directly to input 2. Then activate the instrument switch below the gain dial for input 2. Then use the dial above to set a level. These inputs will now appear directly in your DAW for recording as Sapphire Pro inputs 1 and 2. On the rear panel, there are the remaining combi input connectors for inputs 3 to 8. These can receive microphone or line level signals from XLR or jack connectors respectively. Then there are the remaining analog outputs, outputs 3 to 10 on balance jacks, for connecting to a surround setup or using as inserts for sending your tracks to external hardware processors. The digital connections consist of SPDIF on coaxial or optical ADAT which can also be set up as SPDIF using the settings option in the Sapphire Pro 40 control software. There's also MIDI interfacing available using standard 5-pin connectors. The Sapphire Pro 40 control software allows comprehensive mixing of inputs and tracks from your DAW so that monitor or headphones mixes can be created, whether recording or just playing back. A total of 16 mono mixes are available or any combination of stereo and mono up to 16 channels. All of these mixes have the same 18 tracks, selectable from all 18 inputs and 20 tracks from your DAW, when running at 44.1 or 48 kHz sample rates with ADATs over optical. However, all of the other mixer settings, such as level and panning, are entirely independent for each mix. For example, if recording a vocalist and a guitarist and wanted to give them each their own separate stereo headphones mix, then you can do the following. Firstly, mixes are selected using the tabs at the top of the software window. The mixes can be linked together to create stereo mixes using the stereo switch in the mix output level section, here. 
So to create three stereo mixes, one for the monitors and one for each pair of headphones, I can click on the Mix 1 tab, then on the Stereo button. You can see that mixes 1 and 2 have now joined together to form one stereo mix. So now I can do the same for mixes 3 and 4, and mixes 5 and 6. To set up the monitor mix before the other two, click on the routing preset switch and select zero latency tracking so that mix one is sent to your monitors. More on this shortly. Now to set up the source signals for each mix, you can click on the boxes at the top of each track and then choose them from the drop down list. So to set up my vocalist mic on track one, I choose line one here. Then to set up the guitarist on track two, I choose line two here. Now I can select my DAW tracks alongside. Again, if I want to link these tracks, then I can use the stereo switches. And double clicking on any fader will set the level to Unity. DAW 1 and 2 will normally be the master output of your DAW as default, once you've selected the Sapphire Pro as the audio output device in the DAW's preferences. So if you just want to have the master output as your backing tracks, then you're done. However, if you want to have specific levels of certain parts of your track without disrupting the levels in your DAW session, then it's easy to do. For example, to send this drum track to the Sapphire Pro 40 control mixer, just set the outputs of the track to Sapphire Pro outputs 3 and 4. Now if I solo the track and then go back to my Sapphire mixer, when I select DAW tracks 3 and 4 on the mixer, you can see the drums showing up. And I can name the track accordingly. Once your mix has been created, you can use the box in the output section to copy mix 1 to mix 3. And then mix 5. Now you have a basic mix ready for your artists and can fine tune it when they arrive. To send mix 3 to headphones 1, you have two options. Either select line outputs 7 and 8 here, which headphones 1 are a duplicate of, or you can do it in the router section. So to set up mix 5 on headphones 2, which is a duplicate of outputs 9 and 10, I just select mix 5 left for output 9, and mix 5 right for output 10. The routing section makes it really easy to route the same mix to more than one place, so I can route that same mix to line outputs 5 and 6, as you can see. The routing preset options here allow you to quickly select a mode for routing certain signals to your Sapphire Pro outputs. For example, to route outputs 1 and 2 from your DAW to each pair of Sapphire hardware outputs, including both headphones, select DAW tracking. DAW 1 and 2 are now routed to the main monitors, outputs 3 and 4, and so on. The loopback option here is the facility that allows you to record audio from one software application to another. For example, to record from iTunes to Live, if loopback is selected here, just make sure that Sapphire Pro is selected as the default audio output for your computer, then select Sapphire inputs 19 and 20 as the input source for an audio track in the DAW. Now when iTunes plays, the audio appears in the DAW and can be recorded to a track. The monitoring section of the software has switches to select the outputs that are controlled by the monitor level control. This is so that some outputs can be independently controlled if required, or all together with one dial. Clicking on a switch changes the button states between red, which means that the line output is not controlled by the dial and muted, and blue, which means it is controlled by the dial. Alternatively, there is a grey state, set by shift clicking. This means that the output is not controlled by the dial, and a full level is sent to the output, so that the level can be set externally. Make sure that the external level is turned down before setting the switch to grey, to avoid speaker blowouts. There are also monitor presets, to access instant setups to save time here. Lastly, this section allows the settings to be viewed and edited. Simply clicking on the red settings opens a drop-down menu, where the sample rate and sync source can be changed. 
I hope you found this tutorial useful. For more information on the Sapphire Pro 40, consult the answer base on the Focusrite website.